there, I'm Breds and welcome back to Math Hacks. Today I am walking you through two solutions to the King's Riddle. Now the King's Riddle is one of my all time favorite riddles because it's pretty clever, yet it all relies on the fundamentals of our counting system. If you're unfamiliar with base systems and how to convert between them, then today's riddle is going to be an excellent application of those topics. Don't worry, I'm going to review everything step by step, so it should be pretty easy for you to follow along. First, let's recap the riddle and then we'll jump into solving it. Oh, and I should mention that if you haven't subscribed to the channel already, right now is a great time to do so. The king of a small country invites 1,000 senators to his annual party. As a tradition, each senator brings the king a bottle of wine. Soon after, the queen discovers that one of the senators is trying to assassinate the king by giving him a bottle of poisoned wine. Unfortunately, they do not know which senator nor which bottle of wine is poisoned, and the poison is completely indiscernible. However, the king has 10 prisoners he plans to execute. He decides to use them as taste testers to determine which bottle of wine contains the poison. The poison, when taken, has no effect on the prisoner until exactly 24 hours later when the infected prisoner suddenly dies. The king needs to determine which bottle of wine is poisoned by tomorrow so that the festivities can continue as planned. Hence he has only time for one round of testing. How can the king administer the wine to the prisoners to ensure that 24 hours from now he is guaranteed to have found the bottle of poisoned wine? At first glance, this seems like an absolutely impossible task. How can we test 1,000 bottles of wine with only 10 prisoners? And I think that's the most mind-boggling part of this riddle, is that it feels like we would need a lot more than 10 prisoners to accomplish this task. So before we jump into how we're going to solve this problem, how we're going to distribute the wine, and how we're going to trace down that poisonous bottle, the first thing we need to think about is why 10 prisoners is a sufficient number of prisoners to test all of these bottles of wine. Now, when you first think about this, you may be thinking that each prisoner tests a different bottle of wine, so you can only test 10 bottles of wine at once. Although that's true, that is a way to test 10 bottles of wine, that is thinking about each bottle and each prisoner separately. And what we can do here is think about all 10 pres prisoners and their outcomes together. And when we think about all 10 of them together, we realize that we can make a lot more potential outcomes. We can make at least 1,000 different outcomes. Now, once I've confirmed that we have 1,000 different outcomes, then I know that I just need to come up with a system to distribute the wine so that each outcome can be traced back to a specific bottle. So let me explain a little bit more about how 10 prisoners can have over 1,000 different outcomes as a group. So after each prisoner drinks from their assigned wine bottles, in 24 hours, we will find out the outcome. And each prisoner has two outcomes. After they drink the wine, they will either live or die. So let's draw a little picture here. I'm going to draw a slot diagram and I'm going to draw 10 slots, one to represent each prisoner. And I'll go ahead and label these prisoners alphabetically. Now, after 24 hours, prisoner A will either live or die. So there are two potential outcomes for prisoner A. Using combinatorics, I'm just gonna go ahead and write above prisoner A, a two to represent the two possible outcomes. Now, prisoner B has the same two possible outcomes. Prisoner B will either be alive or dead after 24 hours. Of course, this is true of all of our prisoners, so I'm just gonna fill in twos above each of the prisoner's positions. What we want to know is how many different possible outcomes there are if each prisoner can either live or die. So using our multiplication rule of counting, all I need to do here is multiply each prisoner's potential outcomes 
together. So I'm going to multiply 2 times 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 2 or simply 2 to the 10th power since I have 10 prisoners. And when you calculate that, you get 1024. That means that I have more than enough potential outcomes to test 1,000 bottles of wine. Technically, I could test up to 1,024 bottles. Now that we've confirmed that 10 prisoners has enough outcomes to test 1,000 bottles of wine, we can go about the process of figuring out how we're going to distribute this wine so that all 1,000 bottles of wine are tasted from and no two prisoners have drank from the same subset of wine. We also need to distribute the wine in some sort of methodical or systematic way and be able to trace back the poison from the different prisoners' deaths. So we need to be able to figure out which bottle of wine was the poisonous one depending on our total outcome. Now that's a little bit tricky, so let's take it easy. First thing, we need to label the bottles of wine, so that way we can tell them apart. So I'm going to number the bottles of wine from 0 to 999. Next, let's go ahead and create another slot diagram, just like the one we used up here in our precursory problem. So I'll go ahead and write out 10 little spaces and label them A through J. One way we could go about distributing the wine is by having prisoner A drink from every other bottle. So prisoner A would drink from all the even numbered bottles. That means prisoner A would be drinking from bottle zero because we started counting with zero. We'd skip one, drink from two, skip three, drink from four, six, eight, ten, 12, and so on. Now let's have prisoner B drink from every other pair, so every two. That means prisoner B would be drinking from bottles zero and one, would skip two and three, drink from four and five, skip six and seven, drink from eight and nine, skip 10 and 11, drink from 12 and 13, and we'd continue that pattern. Now let's have prisoner C drink from every other set of four. So C would be drinking from bottles 0, 1, 2, and 3, and then would skip 4, 5, 6, and 7, and then would drink from 8, 9, 10 and 11, and we'd skip 12, 13, 14, 15, and then we'd drink from the next four and so on. Are you beginning to see the pattern I'm doing here? So we did every other bottle with prisoner A, prisoner B did every other two, prisoner C did every other four. Let's have prisoner D do every other eight. So I'm simply just doubling the number that I'm having them drink and skip from. That means the prisoner D would be drinking through from bottles 0 through 7, and then would skip 8 through 15, would drink from 16 through 23, would skip the next 8, drink from the following 8, and so on. Prisoner E then is going to drink from every other 16, which means that prisoner E will be drinking from bottles 0 through 15, will skip bottles 16 through 31, and then we'll drink from bottles 32 through 47, and skip the next 16, drink from the following 16, and so on. Next, we'll have prisoner F drink from every other 32, which will look like drinking from bottles 0 through 31, skipping 32 through 63, and then drinking from bottles 64 through 95, skipping the next 32, and then drinking from the follow 32, and so on. Prisoner G is going to drink from every other 64. 
So prisoner G will drink from 0 through 63. We'll skip the next 64 and then drink from 128 through 191. And then skip the next 64 and so on. Prisoner H will drink from every other 128. So we doubled 64. Which means H will be drinking from 0 to 127. We'll skip the next 128, and then we'll drink from 256 through 383, and so on. All right, we're almost there. Prisoner I will drink from every other 256. And lastly, Prisoner J will drink from every other 512. And because we only have 1,000 total bottles, They'll just drink from 0 to 511, and then that'll be it. So we have distributed the bottles of wine so that each prisoner has drinking from a different subset, and we have tested all the bottles, and we have created a nice pattern. And the pattern is going to be the most important part to decoding which bottle of wine is the poisoned bottle. So one of the most important things that we've created here is a nice pattern, as I mentioned. So we have skipped every other one, every other two, every other four, every other eight, 16, 32, 64, 128, 256, and 512. So if we think about patterns and sequences, we see that we have taken our number and doubled it each time. Now when we are doubling the number, starting with one, that represents powers of two. So the tricky part here is to remember that anything to the zero power equals one. So when I skipped every other one, that is the same as skipping every other two to the zero power. When I skipped every other two, that was the same as skipping every other two to the first power. Every other four is the same as every other two squared. Eight is the same as two cubed. 16 is the same as 2 to the 4th. 32 is the same as 2 to the 5th. 64 is the same as 2 to the 6th. 128 is the same as 2 to the 7th. 256 is the same as 2 to the 8th. And lastly, 512 is the same as 2 to the 9th. So we have a really nice pattern going on here. That is one important piece of information. The other important piece of information is that at the end of our 24 hour trial period, these prisoners are each going to be either alive or dead. So there's two potential outcomes or states for each prisoner. Let's go ahead and give them a little notation. Let's say that if they live, we will put a one in that position and if they die, they'll get a zero. So that's how I'm going to represent whether a prisoner is alive or dead in our final outcome. Now, if you're familiar with number systems, you may notice that we are moving towards a binary number system. I'm just gonna let that sink in for a second, see if you can understand where we're going with this. All right, if you don't see it, that's okay because I'm gonna go over base systems really quick. If this is a review, you can fast forward past this part. But what I want to do is I'm gonna go over what our decimal or base 10 number system looks like. And when you see that, you may realize that what we have here is very similar to a binary number system. Those of you who saw my hint on Instagram for this problem saw that my hint was binary. And that's where we're going. Okay, so let's take a little tangent and review the base 10 number system. So thinking back to elementary school when we first learned about our number system, they told us that the first position in a number was the ones place. And later on, we learned that the ones place could also be represented by 10 to the zero power. 
The next digit to the left is the tens place. And it can be represented by 10 to the first power. Next, we have the hundreds place. And it can be represented by 10 to the second power, since 10 squared is 100. Then comes the thousands place. And it's represented by 10 to the third power, since 10 cubed is 1,000. And we'll do one more. The next one would be the 10,000th place and it's represented by 10 to the fourth. Now I could keep doing this as many places as I want, and each time my power on 10 will increase by one. So I'd have 10 to the fifth in the next place digit, 10 to the sixth, 10 to the seventh, and so on. And that's why we call it a base 10 system, because each group maxes out at its power of 10. So I can only go up to the ones in this place, and then I take my group and make a 10, right? And then when I max out of these two digits, I can take all those at 99 and add one, and I get a one in the 100s place, and that makes the next power of 10, okay? So this should all be reviewed. This is just how our real number system works. The other important thing to think about in a base 10 or decimal number system is that we have 10 unique symbols or characters that we can place in each of these digits. So those are our counting numbers, zero through nine. Every base system or counting system has these two distinct parts. The first part is it has whatever the base is, so in this case we have base 10, and that base is given a power starting with zero, and then working our way up as we move left. Of course, as you know, with if we add a decimal point, we could also count downwards into the negative powers, but we don't need to deal with that today. The other part of any base system is it has the same number of unique symbols as the base. So since we have a base 10 system here, I have 10 unique symbols that I can place in each one of these place values to create new numbers. So that's how a base 10 number system works. Now let's take that knowledge and apply it to what we're working with up here. What we have is very similar to a base two system. I have two to the zero power and then two to the one power, two to the two power and counting up. I also have two unique symbols, right? I said I was gonna use a zero to represent a death and one to represent a prisoner that survived. Now the only problem here is that my prisoners are lined up backwards. Our normal base 10 number system starts with the smallest number, the 10 to the zero power on the right, and then as I make new places to the left, I increase the power. Here, I have started on the left and I increase the power as I go right. So what we're going to do to make a binary number system out of our prisoners is we're just going to flip them all around. So I'm going to go ahead and put A on this side. So it's A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J. So that way my powers will be counting up right to left. And then for our outcomes, we'll use our code of zero and one. So let's go ahead and try that. And then I'll show you how that's going to connect back to our 1000 bottles of wine. So I've gone ahead and reordered our diagram so that prisoner A is on the far right and J is on the far left. And we have our code here for our outcomes. They're going to be zero for death and one for alive. So each prisoner will either get a zero or one in their position. The neat thing here is that the outcome of the 10 prisoners, whether they live or die, is going to be expressed as a binary number. We'll have like zero, one, 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 zero, 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 one, zero, one. And that binary number can be converted to a decimal number, and I'll show you how to do that. And that decimal number will correspond directly to the bottle of wine. 
because we numbered our bottles of wine, 0 to 999, in our standard decimal system. So let's work through a few examples so you can see how this translates back. Let's start really simple. Let's say that all the prisoners died. So I would have zeros in all 10 positions. This means that whatever bottle of wine was the poisonous one, every person drank from it. Now, all we need to do is convert our binary number, which is all zeros in this case, to a decimal number. And that's really easy to do. All you have to do to convert is take the number in each position and multiply it by the place value of that, and then add all those together. So for this first one, it's really easy since zero times two to the zero is zero, and zero times two to the first is zero, zero times two to the second is zero, and so on. I'm gonna have just zeros all added together. So zero in binary is still zero in decimal, which means that zero is the number on the wine bottle that was poisonous. So if all the prisoners die, I can trace it back to wine bottle number zero. Now let's go ahead and take a look at our wine distribution to get a feel for what happened there. Now if I look back at the wine distribution, I see that it's true, all 10 prisoners drank from bottle zero. So bottle zero was the poisonous wine bottle if all 10 prisoners die. Let's try another one. This time, let's say that only prisoner A survives. So I'm gonna put a one on prisoner A, and then I'm gonna put zeros on the rest of the values. So to convert this binary number to decimal, I just take my one and I multiply it with its corresponding place value, which is two to the zero. So I have one times two to the zero, and that's the only calculation I need to do because the rest of the places are zero, so they are going to sum to nothing. So one times two to the zero is equal to one times one, since anything to the zero power is one. And so this is equal to one. Again, not very exciting because one in binary is the same in decimal, but this is helpful. So if everyone except for prisoner A dies, I am saying that the poisonous bottle is bottle number one. Let's look back at our wine distribution to see if that makes sense. Here we see that prisoner A skipped bottle one because prisoner A only drank from the even bottles. But the rest of the prisoners drank from some set of at least two or more starting with zero. So that means that prisoner B through J all drank from bottle one. So once again, our conversion works out. Okay, so so far our conversions haven't been very exciting. Let's make a little more interesting of a number. Let's say that prisoner A and B both survive and the rest die. So that means I'll have zeros in all these positions except for B and A, where I'll put a one to represent that they're alive. So, this binary number, which is just one one, because I don't really need to pay attention to all these placeholder zeros if there's no ones over here. But to convert it back to a decimal number, I would just multiply one times two to the zero and one times two to the first and add those together. So I'm going to get one times two to the one plus one times two to the zero. So two plus one equals three. So if only A and B survive, we're saying that bottle number three was the poisonous bottle. Again, let's check that with our wine distribution. So we see that A in fact skipped number three because prisoner A only drank from the even numbered bottles. Prisoner B drank from zero and one and then skipped two and three, and drank from four and five. So prisoner B also skipped three. Now let's see, prisoner C drank from three, 
Prisoner D drank from 0 to 7. That includes 3. 0 to 15 includes 3. Yep, all of these first sets include 3. So here we can see that once again, if the bottle number 3 was poisonous, all of these prisoners would die and the only two to survive would be A and B. Let's do one final example and this time let's do something a little more complicated of an outcome. So let's say that J, G, E, and A are the only ones to die. The rest survive. So we have the binary number 01101011110. Let's figure out what bottle of wine must have been poisoned to produce this outcome. Again, to convert from binary to decimal, all I need to do is multiply together the place value with its value and then sum all those together. So we'll have 0 times 2 to the 9th plus 1 times 2 to the 8th plus 1 times 2 to the 7th plus 0 times 2 to the 6th plus 1 times 2 to the 5th plus 0 times 2 to the 4th plus 1 times 2 to the 3rd plus 1 times 2 squared plus 1 times 2 to the 1st and 0 times 2 to the 0. So I'm going to just cross out the ones that are 0 times something since those will just be 0. 1 times 2 to the 1st will be 2. 1 times 2 squared will be 4. 1 times 2 cubed will be 8. 1 times 2 to the 5th will be 32. 1 times 2 to the 7th will be 128. And 1 times 2 to the 8th is 256. So if we go ahead and add all of these together, we get 430. That means that that is the bottle of wine that was poisoned if only prisoners J, G, E, and A died. So that is solution number one. But I told you that there are two solutions. The second solution is really easy to understand once you've already seen this solution. And it still works with binary. It just takes a slightly different approach. So just to wrap up this problem, I'm going to walk you through the alternate way you could have solved it. All right, for solution number two, you would begin by taking each bottle of wine and labeling it 0 to 999, just like we did in the first problem. Now step two is interesting. What you would do on step two is you would also label each bottle of wine with its binary equivalent. So I'll show you what that looks like. So let's say we have wine bottles, wine in decimal here, and then binary on this side. So wine bottle number zero in decimal will also be zero in binary. We learned that before. But what I'm going to do here is I'm going to make sure that each binary number is 10 digits. So if it's zero, I'm just going to put in placeholder zeros until I get 10 digits. So for this one, it'll just be 10 zeros next to each other. Again, you wouldn't normally in binary, you'd just write zero. But for this problem, we're going to be using this as a diagram. So I'm going to just write out an additional nine placeholder zeros. Okay. The next bottle of wine would be bottle one. And as we learned in our other example, we just put a one in a two to the zero position and then I'll fill in with zeros to make it 10 digits long. Next we'll have bottle number two and I'll convert that to binary. And a nice little helpful thing you can do if you're having trouble with this conversion is you can draw a little diagram and write down the place values. So remember we start with two to the zero and 
each position to the left, we increase the power by one. I'm just gonna go up to the ninth since all of our binary numbers will be 10 digits long. Underneath this though, I'm just going to write what these are equivalent to if I multiply it out. So two to the zero is the same as one. Two to the first is the same as two. Two to the second is four, eight, 16, 32, 64, 128, 256, and 5, 12. So when I'm converting from decimal to binary, I can place zeros and ones in these positions. And I just wanna make sure that whatever positions I place, when I add them together, it totals to this number. So for example, to get two, I would put a zero in the ones position and a one in the twos position. So I'd go zero and one. So that is binary for two because I have zero here and one here and one times two gives me two. In our problem, we're gonna add our placeholder zeros so that it's 10 digits long. So I'll just add eight zeros to the left. All right, let's try another one. So wine bottle three in decimal would convert two. To make three, I need a two and a one. So I'm gonna put a one in this position and a one in this position. One times one plus one times two gives me a total of three. So that's the conversion. And for measure, we'll add our placeholder zeros. Wine bottle four. Now I have a force place right here. So I'm just gonna put a zero, zero, and a one. So one, zero, zero is equivalent to four in decimal. And then because we're doing our placeholders, I'll add zeros for the rest of these places. All right, let's do one more example. So bottle five, to make five out of these numbers, I need a four and a one. So I'm gonna put a one in the ones place a zero in the twos place, and a one in the fours place. That way, four and one make five. So 101 is the same as five in decimal, and I'll add my placeholder zeros. So you would have to go through and do this for every number up to 999. And then on each bottle of wine, you would have its decimal value and a 10 digit binary number. So we're basically working in the opposite order that we did in our alternate solution. Now to distribute the wine. So in this problem, what we would do is we would take our first bottle of wine and we'd look at it and it would have a zero in decimal and it'd have a zero in binary. And I'd have my 10 prisoners lined up and I would match up each of my 10 digits with the prisoner in order. And if there is a zero in the same position as the prisoner, then the prisoner will drink. If there's a one, then the prisoner will skip drinking from that bottle. So for example, bottle zero, all 10 prisoners will drink from. Bottle one, the nine prisoners on the left will drink and the one on the far right will skip. Bottle two, these eight prisoners will drink, this prisoner will skip, and the one on the end will drink. Three, these eight will drink, and these two will skip. And so on and so forth, you get the idea. So we're basically doing the same thing as we did in the other problem, except for we're doing our binary earlier on and we're using the binary as a sort of diagram to tell us who can or can't drink from that bottle. Then after 24 hours, you'll convert the outcome back to a decimal number, just like we did in the first solution. So you'll have your prisoners lined up. If they are alive, you'll give them a one. If they are dead, you will give them a zero in that position that binary number that you get, you'll convert back to decimal and it'll tell you which wine bottle was poisonous. So essentially this solution is the exact same as the first, but the way we decided to distribute the wine was a little different. Instead of doing the doubling, 
like we did on the first solution, we just right away converted our decimal numbers into their equivalent binary numbers and used those binary numbers as the template for how we are going to distribute the wine. I love this riddle because it's really challenging, yet it's so fundamental. Really, the solution has to do with understanding the fundamentals of mathematics, which is our counting system. The fact that we have a base 10 counting system has everything to do with our hands, the fact that we have 10 fingers. That is the reason why we count up to 10 before starting over again. And that is where the decimal system comes from. It's also why each place value is called a digit, just like our fingers are called digits. And in the modern world of computers, you hear a lot about binary, and the binary counting system would be equivalent to if we only had two fingers to count with, so every group of two, we had to move up a place value. Anyway, that's why I love this problem. I love that you are dealing with base 10 and base two number systems as the solution, really the key to unlocking this terribly tricky problem with a little bit of combinatorics thrown in for good measure, which to me makes a great riddle. Thank you so much for joining me on another episode of Math Hacks. If you are in need of math help, make sure to head on over to the Math Hacks channel where I have lots of easy to follow math tutorials waiting for you. Till next time, I'm Brett and happy math.